For many years, the snobbery of Hollywood has meant that WWE has never really been challenged for its controversial issues as it's often been overlooked. The only time the company has seen real change is when issues within the company have been brought to the attention of the masses. The steroid scandal forced a change in the company's drug policy, and the Benoit tragedy meant measures had to be taken in regards to concussions. Much like all entertainers, it can often be difficult for the WWE talent to raise internal concerns regarding some of the issues they face as an employee, especially when they have mortgages to pay and families to feed. For the fans, it is entertainment, but for the performers, it is their lives, and they do not want to risk upsetting the wrong person, so they often choose to remain silent. Though the online wrestling community can often be chaotic, we universally respect these athletes and sometimes we must be the ones to address these issues on their behalf. Thus, we must feel it's our obligation to look at an authentic examination into WWE's issues of racial inequality, especially during a period where this conversation is so crucial. Join us now as the final bell looks at the WWE and its history of racism. There is a reason that WWE is the world leader in sports entertainment. It is broadcast in over 180 countries across 26 languages, reaching over 8 million homes worldwide. Vince McMahon's Grand Stage is a genreless, multicultural, multinational, multi gendered, shapeless ball of clay which offers unlimited creative potential for its fans. It has a social media outreach of over 1 billion followers. It produces over 8 hours of weekly content across all of its television network shows, and its streaming service has nearly 50,000 hours worth of content for its 1.5 million subscribers to access at any time. This is the influence that WWE has had over its audience. But much like all media outlets, the more of a product's content you consume, the more subjected to its influence you become. WWE employs over 300 wrestlers and on-air personalities, a third of which is made up of ethnic minorities. Their programming communicates societal issues, showcasing a representation of American culture in a variety of ways through its characters and storylines. WWE's diverse audience is made up between the ages of 18 and 50, with the average age of the viewer being the latter, and it has nearly as many female viewers as it does males. Yet, for a multinational company with such a large global presence, the WWE product itself remains predominantly American and deeply conservative. Like all entertainment companies, WWE are dependent on advertisers. Though television ratings may seem important, they work alongside how much influence the WWE's programming has on selling the products they advertise to their viewers during the three-hour time slot. This means that WWE will design their programming for the target audience of their advertisers. They want to sell large quantities of an advertiser's product because it means more money and, of course, more growth for them. Now, we as an audience have been conditioned by a culture which relies upon signs and codes. How do we know Luke Skywalker is the good guy? He has light blonde hair and a baby blue lightsaber, whereas Darth Vader is covered in darkness with his evil red lightsaber. The baby faces and heels carry these same motifs, but this symbolic language is also the root of stereotyping. And for ethnic minorities, it has shown to be a real problem. WWE dedicate television time and invest money into their characters because they are products and they want to see them succeed. But racism is also embedded into Western culture that their ethnic characters only seem to succeed when they are presented as stereotypes, but these stereotypes that WWE use are not positive representations of an individual's culture. In 1990, tensions between America and Iraq increased, which led into the Gulf War. As this was happening, the World Wrestling Federation saw the real American Hulk Hogan battle the Iraqi sympathizer Sergeant Slaughter, who had turned his back on the United States, becoming a follower of Saddam Hussein, joining forces with General Adnan and Colonel Mustafa. 
Now, instead of challenging their audience by presenting their ethnic stars as positive representations of their culture, thereby allowing a dialogue to open with their audience that says that not all ethnics are the same, the WWE chose to reinforce a racist ideology so that they could profit from it. Over the years, WWE television has seen some of the most racially insensitive content presented to their audience. Uh, Vince McMahon dropping an end bomb on John Cena in front of Booker T, Kai and Tai, whose promos were dubbed for comedic effect as they doubted just how evil they were, the Mexicals who would come to the ring wearing bodysuits as they piled up onto a single lawnmower, and when Goldust dressed in blackface walked to the ring with jive music while dressed as black exploitation film character Shaft. Eddie Guerrero's persona was defined by exploiting racial stereotypes of the Hispanic culture. Eddie would come to the ring in a lowrider, he would lie, cheat, and steal his way to the top of the roster. Even though he was popular amongst WWE's internal audience, this character did very little in representing Hispanics in a positive manner. In 2010, Randy Orton cut a promo on MVP, Mark Henry, and Kofi Kingston, whereby he said that he and Legacy, a stable defined by their white privilege and ancestral heritage, belong in the WWE, whereas Kingston, Henry, and MVP belonged in the hood where they come from. The late Shad Gaspard and JTG were also subject to this racial insensitivity. Billed as the tag team Crime Time, the duo found themselves belittled by rated RKO, who believed that as long as a team like Crime Time were on the roster, there was never a real threat to the tag team championships. Crime Time would often be booked as steal from their opponents, and their verbiage was made up of gangster rap slang. In 2004, former APA tag team member Bradshaw was reintroduced to the WWE's audience as SmackDown's latest heel, John Bradshaw Layfield. His first promo saw him hunt down illegal aliens at the Mexican border because he was an American who has made a fortune in this great country. In the 1980s, the junkyard dog was as popular with the WWF audience as Hulk Hogan was, yet the character was never allowed to embrace his black heritage in a positive way. With a metal chain wrapped around his neck, JYD would dance his way to the ring to a gangster rap song called Grab Them Cakes, which referred to touching females on the rear end. Building up the trio of Xavier Woods, Kofi Kingston, and Biggie Lanston, a name derived from black rapper Biggie Smalls, the WWE presented the New Day via vignettes that depicted black gospel music, with the three preaching about the power of positivity. They then debuted this new team on Black Friday 2014. A common occurrence for fans on social media is to point out the WWE's hypocrisy by bombarding Vince McMahon's Twitter when he touts out about Black History Month. Yet for a man who claims Martin Luther King Jr. is his hero, he allowed a segment to air on WWE television on Martin Luther King Day, which saw Seth Rollins knock out Biggie with a curb stomp. The curb stomp itself brings to mind the controversial 1998 movie American History X. If a black wrestler isn't used as a stepping stone for the white American or being made fun of, another typical role WWE will place them in is that of the angry black man. But this role was most prolific under the stable The Nation of Domination, which recalled both the Nation of Islam and the militant organization The Black Panthers from the time of the Civil Rights Movement. This stable was led by Farouk, played by Ron Simmons, who during his time in WCW became the first ever African American World Heavyweight Champion. What speaks volumes for Ron Simmons' popularity is that WCW was based out of Atlanta, Georgia, which is not only considered to be one of the most southern states, but was a Confederate state during the American Civil War, a state which fought against the abolition of slavery. Yet, WWF felt that instead of embracing Simmons' success, they would instead present him as simply a stereotype. Arguably, WWE's most shameful depiction of ethnic minorities was Virgil. Virgil was hired as a bodyguard by the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase, a character based loosely on Vince McMahon himself. Yet for a bodyguard, Virgil will often be seen massaging DiBiase's feet, carrying his belongings, and making his food. Clearly, Virgil was a slave to the rich white DiBiase. As the storyline between the two progressed, Virgil fought for redemption, but WWE's idea of redemption for Virgil was that he learned to spell his own name. Though he won his match against DiBiase, it wasn't because Virgil overcame his oppression, as he only won the match due to interference by Roddy Piper. After having lost the match, DiBiase then hit Virgil with the Million Dollar Dream. Leading into their match at WrestleMania 19, on an episode of Raw, Triple H said to Booker T, Somebody like you doesn't get to be a world champion. That's your role. Your job is to make people like me laugh, and you're very good at it. With your nappy hair, and your suckers. When asked at WrestleMania 19 press conference by Michael Cole if his remarks were racist, Triple H said that they had been misinterpreted, and that he was actually referring to Booker T's criminal past. 
If this were true, why is it that on Raw Triple H threw a bathroom towel at Booker T, then a dollar bill, and then ordered Booker T to clean up? The list of internal racism within WWE is as long as the Big Show's arm. Former WWE trainer Bill DeMott had accusations of racism made against him. Triple H has been accused of referring to Hispanics as bumblebees. Charlotte Flair's ex-husband Ricky Johnson accused both her and her father of racism. Michael Hayes notoriously told Mark Henry that he was more of an N-word than Henry. Former WWE and TNA star Gail Kim has stated that those in power in WWE are incredibly racist. Carlito said that Vince McMahon once told him to spick his character up, and CM Punk recently suggested that AJ Styles was a racist. But for fans, one of the most disappointing moments came when Hulk Hogan was released by WWE in 2015 due to racist remarks. Leaked audio revealed Hogan complaining that his daughter Brooke had been dating a black person. After the world was left in shock, Hogan claimed these remarks were a result of him having been through a difficult time. Hogan stated to ABC News that he isn't a racist, but that he has inherited a racial bias due to the social conditionings of his upbringing. Several famous figures came out and addressed Hogan's racist remarks. The Rock said that he had known Terry for many years, but had never known him to be racist. Professional boxer George Foreman did not condone the language used, but he defended Hogan by saying that he was not a racist. Booker T publicly supported Hogan, stating that Hogan was one of the few people that looked out for him and his brother when they arrived in WCW, and that Hogan was not a racist and that he deserved a second chance. Mark Henry said that he was happy for Hogan to have a second chance as long as he apologized to each of the African-American superstars in the WWE. It seems that Hulk Hogan sincerely regrets his comments, but interestingly, AEW's money mark Tony Khan recently revealed that AEW has banned Hulk Hogan from their company for life. The same also goes for Hogan's ex-wife Linda, who made some racist remarks on Twitter. More recently, black wrestlers such as Jordan Miles and Leo Rush have publicly criticized WWE for issues relating to racism. Rush revealed that he had emailed WWE officials due to insensitive treatment of black superstars having to do things that he felt was degrading. For Jordan Miles, he publicly shamed WWE for a controversial t-shirt design that appeared to look like blackface. Even now, there has only been a small amount of ethnic WWE champions. This problem was the one that was felt throughout the WWE Universe in 2019, leading up to WrestleMania. The entire narrative of Daniel Bryan vs Kofi Kingston was one about the oppression of black minorities in the WWE. Each week, they would tease that Kingston was not going to be able to get his match at the Showcase of the Immortals, and Vince McMahon even allowed Kingston a final chance to earn his shot, even though the odds would be stacked against him. By doing this, WWE themselves recognized this racial oppression. After 11 years in WWE, Kingston finally succeeded where many before him have failed. No matter who you are, no matter where you come from, no matter what you look like, if you believe, you can make it happen. Kofi Kingston became the first African-born WWE champion, a moment perfectly defined by a touching viral video of Shad Gaspard and MVP reacting to his win. WWE fans, regardless of race, color, creed, or religion, were elated. Pride swept throughout the MetLife Stadium. It seemed that Kingston had shattered WWE's glass ceiling and that all ethnic minorities would be able to step through and be recognized for more than just their race. For a man who started out with a fake Jamaican accent and then moved onto a gimmick that made him look like a joke, it appeared that Kingston had overcome the odds. Unfortunately, after 180 days as WWE Champion, Kingston defended his title against Brock Lesnar in a match which saw Kingston lose his title in under 10 seconds. This decision not only sparked outrage, but it reminded us all that nothing had changed. But there you have it guys, our look at racism and stereotypes in the WWE. Do you think things have changed over time? Let us know in the comments down below, subscribe if you haven't already, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.